a baby. He doesn't want to think about what kind of drama it's going to bring in his life. And there should have been something in Abraham. He's an 86-year-old man. Hello, somebody. Amen. He knows enough about life to say, wait a minute, now this is not a good idea. But see, there's a point in, in which all of us act the fool. Because we just beat you, we're just chilling. We just want to have fun. We just close the eyes. We just want to have fun. We just, I mean, you know, you know it was a bad investment. But, so, but, but, but they said you make lots of money. You knew it didn't make sense. If you really thought about it, you knew you should have done it. And by the time we get to this point now, Abraham's got to know that there's going to be issues between Ishmael. When he throws this big feast for Isaac, he knows that he, he should know. I mean, let me, let me, he may be still acting childish, but he should know that he's going to have to go and talk to Ishmael. He's going to have to do some patching up with, with Hagar. Listen, I know Isaac is here. But he doesn't want to deal with it. What areas of your life do you not want to deal with? Most of us have at least one. I wish somebody would tell the truth in this house. You got some area where you just throw your hands up, say, hey, whatever. I just let it go on. Until it becomes intolerable and you're forced to deal with it. Here, here, here's, here's what blows my mind. Abraham the warrior. I mean, Abraham, listen, Abraham knows how to fight. You remember that back in, in Genesis 13 and 14, when Lot is taken prisoner, it's Abraham who gets all of his servants together. They go fight. Abraham knows how to fight, but he can't fight with his wife. So <laughs> y'all sleep tonight. <laughs> See, there's some people you can't talk to in your life. Man, they, you just turn into a child. I don't know what to say. Yeah, you do. You're scared. But, but, but to tell the truth, it's not that you don't know. You're just not ready to man up or woman up. Abraham preparing others. Lie. Land is before you. You see, there were so many times in Abraham's life. Abraham's trying to get the chair one. But here's the thing. You can't be challenged and get the chair one. At some point, you got to man up. At some point, you got to say, you know what? All right, Lord, let the chips fall where they may, but I got to deal with this. I got to get these things under control. And here's, here's, here's the thing. It's never as bad as you think it is. I mean, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. But if you will turn it over to God, Amen. he'll deal with it. No, 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 let's go to the text. Let's go to the text. Just, Genesis 21, verse 12. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the lad and your maid. Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her. For through Isaac your descendants shall be named. And, somebody say amen. amen. And of the son of the maid, I will also make a nation. Amen. Because he is your descendant. God says, listen, Abraham, because you are my friend, I know you made a mistake, but I'll bless your mistake. Amen. Somebody needs to give God some praise in this house tonight. Amen. God says, I'll bless your mistakes. But the first thing you got to do is own up. You got to man up. You got to become mature. And once you become mature, and you say, you know what, God? This is exactly what it looks like. Mm. You know, some of us have been lying to ourselves so long, we've almost been, begun to believe the lie. But you know, I, I, I really, I really, I, I didn't know they were crazy. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, I, I, 
couldn't see it coming. That's a lie. You knew the night before the wedding you shouldn't get married. <laughs> you were sitting there the whole night. Lord Jesus, please make this thing work out. I just can't tell all my friends I'm not going to the altar. <laughs> He didn't stop lying and man up and say, yeah, it was wrong. And I had all kinds of warning signs and I had, and the Lord was speaking to me and I just kept, you know, well, you know, everything got problems. Everybody got issues. It's quiet in the house. At some point, you have to let God deal with the mistakes of your past and you stop hiding and lying and running from your mistakes. Amen. Amen. It is Amen. what it is. Yes. God will bless you. But as long as you keep perpetrating a fraud, trying to act like things are other than exactly what they are, God can't bless you. So let's, let's close. If you want to live in chair one, you have to become an adult, which means that you know when to be a parent and when to be a child. Because in case my uncle warns you, because I think we do a poor job of this, and I'm not talking about just this church or one denomination, I think Christianity has done a poor job of letting people know that there are sacrifices and challenges to being a Christian. No, no, I don't, I don't even have time to deal with this, but, but I just, listen, do you know that Jesus says if you can't bear a cross, you are not a disciple? No, no, he didn't say you're a poor disciple. He said you can't be one at all if you can't bear a cross. It's tough to get to chair one because there are things you got to let go of. The things that there are certain admissions you've got to make. Tonight, on this the last evening, the question is, what do you have to let go of? Or what do you need to let go of? <coughs> what attitudes, and behaviors, and lifestyles, and choices, or sins that you picked up in Egypt. Stuff that you used to do when you weren't in Christ. But now you realize it's got to change. Is there anyone here who recognizes that they need God's help to grow up? And you say, Lord, this is your prayer tonight. I need you. I know I've got some areas that I've been running from, some areas that I've been not dealing with, some areas that I need to mature in. And nobody else needs to know what your area is, but you need to be honest about it right now in privacy of your own thoughts, in privacy of your own mind. You need to be honest and say, you know what, Lord, I need help in this area. And I've been running from it, I've not been dealing with it well, but tonight I want to grow up, or begin to grow up, okay? You don't grow up in a moment, I hear you. But at least I want to begin the journey tonight. If you know there's something you need God's help with, I want you to stand to your feet. The last part of my appeal is this. And I'm talking specifically to those of you who do not have a church home or you're looking for a church home. One of the things that God does is that children are always born into families. It's interesting, children never born. Some, some animals, you know, the, the egg hatches and the child is the, the baby, whatever it is, just 